All righty. Hi, Steve Hodgden. Uh, it's today, September 25th, 2019. Um, modern asset management. Got two little topics to go over. Uh, hopefully, give uh, give folks a little taste of what's going on in our real estate note world. I got a uh, I got a a good and a bad this week. I, you know, maybe a maybe a good and a good. Um, but uh, uh, thank you for uh, jumping in. I'm, uh, let's see. Um, got a couple of new names that I uh, don't recognize. Uh, hi, Drew. Hi, Jean. Um, after I run through a quick couple of things, <coughs> we're going to uh, we're gonna open up for questions um, about these two topics or anything else. So the two things I'm going to go over. Um, one is a note that's turned to an REO and walk through some of the processes and steps that happen there and why I'm dissatisfied with my own management of it. Uh, and the other is a, uh, a uh, real estate uh, commercial uh, deal that I've put together where uh, some folks are uh, putting in some money as ten tenants in common um, with uh, buy a property here in California, which will then have a uh, then have a triple net lease and uh, do the old you know produce some passive income game that uh, we all have heard so much about and, uh, and love when it uh, happens. So anyway, so I said there's uh, only three of us here, so I'm just going to get going. I didn't advertise this uh, this this uh, webinar because well I just got too busy. So, <coughs> um, Three years ago, I bought uh, a group of 26 uh, mortgages, small balance mortgages in 13 states. I spent uh, something north of $600,000 to do that. And what appealed to me about this portfolio that we put together, and I got to cherry pick from a from an edge fund, um, is they all carried a coupon of nine or ten percent, and I was able to buy them at a modest discount. I paid uh, about 80 cents on the dollar for them, and uh, and they were all performing uh, well or pretty well. And so the uh, and so this one I'm going to talk about is one at uh, 4101 Seaway Drive in Lansing, Michigan. And my admin's on her way out the door, waving goodbye. Bye, Pang. <laughs> so. Uh, and uh, this was a uh, mortgage payment, about $500 a month. Um, and it was uh, at a 9% interest rate. And that sounded pretty good. Um, the loan to value uh, at the time of purchase was about half. So I felt that I was uh, um, pretty well connected, uh, uh, pretty well protected. Um, and uh, this is this is a picture I clipped off of uh, Google of the house today. It's a, it's a 2019 Google image, so this is what it is. Uh, 1,400 square feet, two stories, in um, not the wrong side of town, but in the quiet side of Lansing that hasn't had a big, uh, hasn't had a big run up like uh, other parts have. Um, it's vacant. We uh, thought that the owner had abandoned it. Well, anyway, let me go to let me go to the next one. So anyway, decent house, probably the nicest of that pool. Um, so I said it was my nicest house yet. So I could go to this. There's a video about this. This was another project that I had to foreclose on. This house is uh, in contract right now, right now for seven point two million dollars. Um, the view that those balconies look at is uh, downtown Los Angeles uh, from from uh, from up on top of a ridge. Um, this is an example of me getting too big for my britches. Uh, the prior property is much more in line with what I understand. Um, this is another property that I had to foreclose on to get me and the other investors in the project to get us paid. But there's a there's a video back on that. This is called Linda Flora. Um, specifically 1200 Linda Floor uh, in uh, Bel Air, if anybody wanted to look at it. Um, so, so what did I do? Uh, July 2016, I bought a performing first mortgage with an unpaid uh, balance, 
principal balance of $42,350, carried a 9% interest rate, and it was current, it was performing. I had a broker price opinion of $80,000, and I've learned that broker price opinions are, you know, depending on, depending on what you ask for, it can be many different things. This was a, a BPO of retail value. This was not a BPO of distressed value. Um, the su subsequent to that, um, payments became sporadic. The, uh, the couple that lived in the property separated. Um, the, the tenant in the property, uh, as part of the settlement with, uh, with her partner, uh, got a um, contract for deed and was paying rent to her partner who was on, on the mortgage who was then paying mortgage uh, mortgage uh, payment to us. <coughs> At some point, she stopped paying the mortgage payments or the person stopped paying the rent. Don't know for sure because you get different stories. Um, Security National Servicing Corporation uh, handled this. Um, I find their work to be excellent, expensive, but excellent. Um, but they move a little slower than uh, I'm used to. And well, that's because it's my money, not theirs, right? So over three years of constant delinquency, <coughs> excuse me, my monthly servicing charge is about $75 a month. At uh, um, $60 for, it's $30 for, they charge $30, charge me $30 for current accounts versus FCI or Madison, which charges 15. Um, and I think Allied, I think around that price. Um, the, uh, uh, they charge $60 for delinquent, so she was always delinquent. And sometimes she was in default, and when you're in default and doing notices of default and sending attorney's demands or all that, <coughs> excuse me, they jump up to $75 a month. So I've got three years of, uh, of expensive uh, servicing and uh, she would she would pay <coughs> excuse me she would pay when she um, got a demand from an attorney that we were going to start foreclosure so she'd pay in eight ten thousand dollar chunks it was routine to get a three or five thousand dollar payment for her to cure the default and then immediately not pay for another six months and uh, so all those uh, taxes, legal fees, and all that stuff added up to about $12,000. I've had $4,700 in advances, uh, primarily for property taxes and legal fees. Um, so we took possession, so we went through the whole default process. Uh, we were the high bidder at auction. Uh, we set a reserve of what our loan amount due was. At that time, it was about $49,000, and nobody bid on it. <clears throat> um, we went to the property uh, to secure it, found the door open and everything gone. So the agent that we, the REO agent hired, that we hired in that area, area changed the locks, secured the door, um, did whatever they did, turned off the gas or you know, whatever the other steps take place. And we were then making an attempt to start to file. Um, Michigan has, um, has a special rule to protect, you know, that's something that came out of all the out of state, out of work, auto workers, is that you can't, they, that borrower has a year right of redemption, um, unless they've abandoned the property and then it can be as short as a month. So we were starting down the path of doing the, uh, doing the uh, fast redemption or fast uh, foreclosure because they had, she had abandoned. And I get a phone call passed on to me from Security National and it's the borrower saying, why have you locked me out of my house? Um, so uh, her and the REO agent uh, have been going round and round a little bit. Um, the the uh, owner, the owner debtor has no immediate incentive to, uh, to move, move on this property uh, right away. Uh, the agent, the agent is trying to get her to give her a listing, give them a listing, um, or I've capitulated and will now consider a somewhat modest cash for keys uh, to shorten the time frame. Although I'm just, you know, 
cash. I, back in the crash, I was doing cash for TDs all the time with rentals. Um, and I'm, you know, maybe, maybe I've spent all that money and I just don't want to do it again. Um, it has a distressed value today of $65,000. Um, our position, uh, we would receive back 52,000. Um, we bought at, uh, 42, 80% of 42. So we bought at 35, 34,000. Um, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna do great. Um, we collected some money along the way, but uh, that got chewed up uh, pretty quickly with uh, uh, Potestivo uh, law firm handling it and all the other attending charges. So that was today's example of uh, what could go wrong, and uh, and a fair amount went wrong. We we went. Uh, I gave this woman some latitude in the beginning. I let her uh, let her uh, out for less than the less than the full amount of uh, of a notice of default at one the first time, and since she immediately went default and default again, we were we weren't inclined to do that. She came to me immediately before the foreclosure uh, before I'm sorry before the uh, uh, REO auction, and offered us ten thousand dollars to cure. And I didn't stop the clock, and I said, "I'll take it if you can get it in time." And she could not. So um, I'm uh, compared to some other foreclosure. Oh, oh, the interior of the property was perfect. It was perfect. It's rent ready right now, which has not been my experience with any other foreclosure that I've done over the years. Um, what would I do different? Um, I'd be more aggressive, um, maybe get different uh, representation. No, probably not different representation, but communicate directly um, with the uh, with the attorney and try to start working on a more creative, mutually beneficial solution earlier on. Um, I don't think she would have vacated the property uh, willingly a year ago. Um, but uh, I didn't. I put it off to the side and let it run the collection route. And uh, you know, I don't know what the net return is going to be annualized over three years. But uh, I could I could have done better. You know, I could have done better. I could have bought a could have bought a partial on a performer. Um, I could have bought a couple of non-performers for that uh, thirty-five thousand dollar investment and uh, and gone that route instead of uh, instead of Instead of make my own, uh, instead of make my own non performer. Um, that's that. That's that one. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, we've got a couple more people join us. Thank you. Oh, Dan. Uh, Dan, you're on. Um, so at this point, um, if somebody's got questions before I go on to uh, something that uh, is a little more, a little more exciting, but if people got any questions about uh, um, steps that we went through, things we could have done different or better. You can uh, unmute your microphone and chime in, or you can uh, pop a question up in the chat box, which you'll find down at the bottom of your toolbar, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll try to uh, I'll try to answer. I'm gonna hang on for a couple seconds before I go and change uh, change slides over to the other one. Um, we're gonna run uh, we're gonna run depending on if we get a number of questions, you know, maybe 45 minutes today. Um, probably a little less. Um, so, so I've been uh, I've been a distressed debt buyer uh, for uh, a couple of decades, uh, all in well, more than a couple of decades. Um, but it was all in credit card paper, um, deficiency balances, uh, subrogation insurance claims, uh, healthcare receivables. Um, did all that. I used to uh, own a group of collection agencies in Northern California. And at one time, had a couple of million data records in my computer. Um, I've uh, done consulting projects for one of the larger debt buyers uh, in, in, uh, in the United States, and have operated uh, operated my own collection agencies for since well since 1989. Um, right now, we're focused on unsecured lending. Um, we're financing primarily uh, medical uh, elective surgeries. And uh, have built a uh, what would qualify as a fintech platform, and that's taken the bulk of my uh, bulk of my attention in the last uh, year plus. So, 
Dan, you want to chime in? Yeah, just just a quick question, but you may have already answered it. You know, you mentioned you were using um, SN for this one. They were a little slower. I was going to say, given your background in debt collection, I was surprised you're not reaching out to the borrowers more just yourself instead of having them do it. Is, is that just more of a bandwidth thing? Just to um, it be, in, in this one, it became bandwidth, and we had had some early conversation that um, I – decided to you know, let me let me let's go let's go run this uh you know by the book kind of thing mm -hmm. um the the exit that i never want is this exit i'm i i don't want to be a property manager in uh remote parts of the country i've got i've got properties here that that we take care of and uh and i didn't want to have to go find a property manager in uh in, in lansing um we had asked her way back at the beginning if you can't afford it why don't you sell and mm -hmm. uh, and it was because of the relationship with her ex-partner who was living who was living in the property uh-huh yeah. yeah and so i i just yeah i think bandwidth is probably is probably as much as anything yeah yeah i, I recently just moved some stuff away from sn just I, I didn't catch the whole the whole case study but um yeah i ran into that problem too where i had some where things were just kind of dragging on mm -hmm. And I found I could get things going faster when I when I stick with some servicers that kind of let you. Yeah, yeah. I had, had we had had a as at one point I had about thirty about thirty loans with them, <laughs> and I had had a collector that was they they gave me a collector who was really long in the tooth and really experienced, and I was she was just, she was better than me. Um, yeah. The the. The guy who's handling the accounts now is likes the likes the good cop bad cop kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm very content being the bad cop, and so so I I tell people I tell people you got to move, um, and you know if you, otherwise you got to go talk to the guy at Security National I can't do anything about it, um, yeah, and uh, and that seems that seems to work that seems uh, seems to work fine, um, the. I like their bankruptcy department. I think they're I think they're they're right on the mark on all of the all the legal uh, mailings. Things go on time. Um, but they're you know, they're twice the price of some other services. Yeah, yeah, they are pricey, which is tough. And when I first started using them, they were on the money on everything, and I was liking them a lot because I, I I started using them at a time when I was starting to my portfolio was growing a little bit. And I was having a hard time keeping up with everything, so it was real nice. But then after a while, that just kind of stopped, and it got to a point where the lady who was managing my stuff, you know, a lot of times in the course of one month, you know, in the call logs would be like, well, I made one call to the borrower, didn't get them, you know, and the next month do the same thing, and then yeah. things just yeah. stretch yeah. out, which starts to hurt when they're already. Yeah. And so, and, and that's expensive. some of it too. And I, and I, uh, you know, Dion uh, DePali. Uh, I've talked to him before. I don't know him real well. Dion, in, in Chicago, I think. Dion, or, or, Dion admonishes me, you know, pretty regularly. You know, was, I, I ran a small balance collection agency. You know, like my my average payment was two hundred dollars, and we'd call people three times a week. You know, it was you know morning, oh, wow. morning, morning noon, and night on thousand dollar balances. And yeah. so when I got into mortgages, and I'm like. What, what do you mean it's one day a week and it's at two o'clock on a Tuesday? No, 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 no. Where's the night calls? Where's the weekend calls? Yeah, it's like a $15,000 oh, oh, no, balance or whatever. Like, well, so, <laughs> so I went back to what I, when I started in the collection business, it was one little shop with six six collectors. And my, I made, made my calls when I bought that agency on Sundays. And I'd sit down with the check register to sign the checks for next week's legal actions. And I'd call people up and say, I'm writing a check for three hundred dollars to the Marin County Court. I'd rather you, you know, I'd rather you take a three hundred dollar discount and pay me than have me do this. Yeah. And so Sunday, also, I, that's what I started doing this portfolio. I started making Sunday calls, and uh, and it and it worked fine, you know. And in, and in that in that instance, it was um, I was tendered over to uh, uh, somebody who was more collaborative, you know. So. Yeah, I don't make calls myself because I don't have a background or training right. in no, debt I, collection. I but absolutely. but I use yeah, but I use Polaris counselors. I don't know if you've ever oh, used. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I've had a 
tremendous success with them. So Andy Lindloff has been really, really good at those. Usually I've, I've got a pretty high hit rate of, of getting things to reperform. And if I buy stuff right, I can usually get it yeah. worked out. The ones I end up taking back are the ones that I bought them in. You know, I kind of knew going in, I was probably going to end up getting them back. So, but yeah. players I like a lot. Okay. Well, I should, I should pay more attention. Th thanks. I've got, I've got a couple that uh, probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be bad to you know, change it up. But like you said, it's, it's bandwidth. When I, when I bought the, when I started buying uh, secured notes at that time, I had, you know, a hundred unsecured loans, you know, maybe 120. Uh, I uh, owned a payday store and a title loan shop in Southern California. And okay. so I had just a little tiny portfolio. I was going into, I was retiring again. And mm -hmm. so my, my idea of retiring and retiring is a part-time job. And yeah. so, you know, so I'd work the, we'd, we'd be open in the morning and then I'd you know, go out to lunch and that'd be my day. Um, then I started doing some of this medical finance and I've done 2,600 uh, loans in the last two years nice so, so that's taken taken everything yeah. we got yeah so, yeah um so polaris polaris is a great idea for uh, for the new folks and 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 this gets out to uh, i think about 800 people uh, a month watch this so oh wow that's cool so, so that'll help um what else are we going to talk about notes before i talk about uh, uh, the partnership deal anything else you want to want to throw out but for folk, for the two of you that don't, for the three of you that are on that don't know, this is Dan Deppin. Uh, Dan's been around the space for a while. He knows what he's doing. He tells the truth. Um, it's uh, refreshing to see him on the call. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over, and we can always come back to this question questions about this in a little bit. I'm gonna switch over to a different PowerPoint show. Let's see. Let's go here. Uh, so, so I want to go through the pieces that I'm putting together for this uh, for this project. Um, I used to own a fairly large piece of property in uh, forty-five thousand square foot uh, uh, C-class retail center in Denver. And I had a tenant there um, that was just phenomenal. They were a uh, food preparation business. They made high quality, organic, grab and go um, salads, sandwiches, soups that were then put into cases at grocery stores. So they would do private label for uh, upper, upper echelon um, uh, grocers. So, you know, they would have, you know, what a United market or whatever the, local name is and they built that i sold that that shopping center in 2012 um no 2015 uh fellow center in 2015 and uh, they've stayed there and they've grown their business uh up to a five million dollar revenue in 11 states and it's just and they came to me and said we're expanding to california and we want you to, we want you to be our want you to be our landlord again and so we went hunting and we found this. Um, probably can't see it real well, but there's two buildings. There's an old Quonset hut. Richmond was the home of the shipyards uh, for the Pacific in World War II. And there's these, uh, there's these Quonset huts in all the industrial parks. They added <laughs> to it a uh, 5,000 or 6,000 square foot steel building, uh, which is the, the peaked roof that's here. Uh, it sits on uh, about an acre, um, good parking, truck access. There's a loading dock over here. And it's currently a food prep business. Uh, so it already has uh, kitchen, uh, has full kitchen, stoves, uh, fire suppression, walk-in freezer, refrigerator, all that stuff. Um, it is right up against uh, the 80 freeway, the corridor that goes between San Francisco and Sacramento. They come to town with a 46 store grocery, grocery chain um, in their pocket to start with and a food distribution agreement with, uh, with UNFI. Um, so I expect them to um, do big stuff. So, so I've got a great tenant. Got an old ugly building, got a great tenant. 
Um, why did we decide on Richmond? Um, I live on the other side of uh, Richmond San Rafael Bridge, and I used to live in Richmond, and I know the uh, I know the town, I know the economic history that they've had. Um, it was the ugliest, toughest part of the Bay Area. Um, they have the city has just done remarkable um, effort to uh, bring it out of the depths. Um, they've got all kinds of uh, labor incentives. Um, they'll there's a small business loan that they'll be able to get for a hundred thousand dollars for equipment. Um, every new hire that they hire, they'll get a ten thousand dollar a year rebate. Um, for uh, for people for up to five years, so up to fifty thousand dollars per employee. Um, the business that's vacating this property has twenty employees that uh, want to carry on. They like the commute. Um, it is Richmond has become Richmond uh, uh, decided to allow mar marijuana grow, so all the re all the big warehouse space vanished, and um, it's been uh, between that. Um, uh, who's it? Uh, Blue Apron produces uh, their food there, um, along with a couple of other very large uh, uh, national players. Um, the I don't know what happened. I don't know who got into the city government. Well, I do know it's some some football players and some and some kind of famous folks, and they've been they've been developing like crazy. Um, so well, we found a building uh, for 1.7 million. We're going to put about 400000 into it, so that's a 2.1 um, total all-in purchase price. Um, we're putting together an investor, an investor group for um, about probably about $800,000, $900,000 in cash so that we can keep the mortgage uh, at a reasonable number and uh, uh, provide, some, uh, provide some cushion. When I bought that shopping center in uh, Denver, um, I thought I was being really conservative with a 25% uh, deposit. Um, it met the debt service coverage ratios just fine. Um, the problem was I bought that shopping center in um, December of 2006. And by March of 2008, my $5 million investment was worth $2.5 million and the shopping center was 80% economically vacant. I had 30,000 square feet of property not paying me rent. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was the times, you know, um, I hold, I held on. I fed that, I fed that property for eight years, took almost every nickel I had, um, and finally exited, like I said, in 2015, uh, with a million dollar profit. So, but, uh, so this is a discussion on um, the value that you get um, pricing commercial real estate. Commercial real estate, dirt doesn't matter. The how pretty the building is doesn't matter. Nothing matters except what the uh, what the lease is. And because I um, have influence, maybe not control, but I have influence, and I'm part of the uh, part of the team. Um, on that side, on the less on the, the lessee side, um, we can we can make the numbers we can make the numbers work. The uh, the business owner will also be part of the investors and own a percentage of the uh, property. Um, so so I just worked up a quick and dirty table of what I thought it would be, and uh, you can see if we go left to right, year one, year one's not very exciting, ninety five hundred dollars a month rent. For ten months, so ninety-five thousand dollars. The mortgage uh, we're gonna get uh, one a million and a quarter uh, at three and three quarters percent interest. Can you believe that for a commercial property with a thirty-year amortization due in ten? Um, so that produces a mortgage payment of fifty-nine hundred. I take the annual rent minus the annual. Uh, mortgage payments, and I come up with uh, $43,000 to the good. This is a triple net lease. The tenant will pay taxes, insurance, um, all utilities, everything, everything. It's pure triple net. Um, so I also then figured if we raised 850 at a seven cap, 
we'd have to produce $59,000 a year in income for the partners. Uh, so that I use that as my benchmark of, I wanted to make a seven cap deal. Um, deals in this marketplace right now are trading in the fours and fives. Um, it's just wacky. It's crazy out here. Uh, we closed on a uh, 1031 exchange um, four months ago for a, uh, we bought a medical office building in a suburb uh, of San Francisco. And that was a four cap, four, right? So, so um, big, big down payment. We put half down, we put down one point, uh, the partner put down 1.6 million on a 3.1 purchase. Um, and that property, maybe I'm going too fast. And that property cash flows because of the giant down payment but why would you buy anything at a four cap? And in that instance, it was because 20% of the building was unoccupied and needed to be refat, needed to be uh, brought up to modern standards that had been vacant for a long time. Um, lovely, lovely, beautiful office uh, building, a little single story, 10,000 square foot building in a, in a Marin County. And uh, it's just, it was just deferred maintenance. So we're cleaning it up painting and buying air conditioners and all that. But anyway, so um, based on this, uh, back to this, if we netted $43,000 the first year, the investors would only realize a 5% return and we're working to see if that's good enough. Um, but we have, uh, we have step up uh, in rent the next year, the rent goes up $1,000 a month. The year after that, it goes up $1,000 a month. And then we start, now we rent stabilized uh, slightly above market. And we're now doing 3% increases through the remainder of the uh, remainder of the term. And so, so that's what we get. So um, at the end, the building is generating annual rents of double what it is at the beginning. And it's still got the same flat mortgage, which will at that point have been taken out into a different product, maybe a, uh, shorter amortization, uh, maybe a 25 year without a balloon, um, uh, might be, might be something to explore. But at that point it's making a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars a year for the partner. Um, and, uh, and I'm getting a little old, my gray hair is getting a little gray. And like I said, you know, Dan said, is it bandwidth? Yes, yeah, bandwidth. Um, I can put, I can put a couple of hundred in this, and uh, and just let it just let it cook for ten years and and my kids will my kids will enjoy the re, you know the result. The other piece that's missing in this uh, in this pro forma is it doesn't consider the valuation of the building. If the building sells for what we paid for, it, you know, you're getting you're getting your share of uh, what's left of the two million dollars. You're getting your eight fifty back. It's it's, it's a, I've done I've done four of these. And uh, and a couple all by myself, and uh, and they they even even the big one in uh, Denver worked. Typically, I've been buying uh, four to ten thousand square foot uh, small office buildings. Do a uh, do a build do a little build out, make them bright and shiny, and then be the cheapest rent in the neighborhood. Fill them up and uh, just just be careful about who I put in. Uh, put in tenants that are viable and are going to stay. And so, <laughs> again, it's all about the lessee. Um, they're a 10 year operator in Denver, successful restaurant owners. Um, they, from the time I left them to the time they showed back up in my life, they went from a million to $5 million. Um, they're one of the few uh, holders of a USDA kitchen organic certification, a USDA kitchen certification, and they, uh, they, they pride themselves in doing as much organic as they can. And they're fussy and they mean real organic. Uh, currently their network is, uh, their service area is 11 states uh, up and down the front range in, uh, in Denver, if you know that part of the world. And I suppose the, private, the label is private, la it's private label to grocers and some under their own brand. Um, and the other things I already said. It's a couple of pictures of the property. Um, yeah. Food prep area, yeah, packaging area. This is the way it's built out. It's all, this will all change. 
Um, although things like the secure doors won't keep uh, things clean. Um, whoops, big lot, uh, big lot for a truck was what I, uh, what I showed you there. Yeah, uh, big lots for a truck to come in and out. Um, it's in a quiet corner. That's the freeway right here. And the ramp is uh, another block up. So for them getting their delivery trucks up and down, uh, up and down Route 80 and all over the Bay Area, uh, would be a breeze. Um, so, so I'm not buying notes today. Um, <laughs> I'm creating, I'm creating plenty of, uh, well, I'm creating plenty of note, discounted notes on my own. Um, I've got a handful of seller finance deals we do that. Most of what I'm doing these days is creating uh, uh, creating discounted, uh, unsecured paper, short term. Um, concerned about uh, potential downturn coming one of these days. I'm keeping uh, we're keeping a lot of our money um, in in two years and less. Um, quick amortization uh, loans. Um, I said most of the well, all of the uh, all of the seller finance loans I've written. Um, the old, the longest one is 15 years, and uh, um, I've got one as short as seven that's sitting in my health savings account. Um, that's my favorite. That's my my fa my favorite loan. It was a 50% uh, um, of UPB um, performer that sits in uh, sits in uh, the health savings account, uh, chugging along at $500 a month. Uh, when you get to be my age, uh, the uh, the the out-of-pocket insurance costs uh, keep going, and uh, so uh, I love the idea that I can uh, pay for uh, pay for my doctor visits with, uh, um, with without having to pay tax on the money first. So um, we'll come back and open the questions again. Um, anybody got any experience doing deals like this? Uh, um, I like this as a tick as a tenant and comment agreement rather than as a joint venture. Um, I like having my name on title uh, or the name of my entity on title. Um, so owning a fractional interest in, in the actual property as opposed to shares in, a, uh, in an LLC um, that fits, uh, fits with what I do, although I, I'm, in, I'm invested in a couple of other uh, LLCs uh, and uh, like these joint ventures. I'm in a mobile home park in uh, um, Wisconsin and uh, uh, apartment complex, big apartment complex uh, up in uh, Bellingham, Washington. So, um, so, so which you know, so I, so I thought I'd look at both sides of deals that I'm that I'm doing right now. Anybody want to chime in? Anybody got a question? Let's see if there's anybody in the chat. I see Eric's uh, jumped on the line. Hey, Eric, good to see you. Um, so, uh, when Eric's on, I usually uh, talk about Pensacola because that's where my projects with him are. Um, we're, uh, we're not, uh, we're holding four, five, five properties in Pensacola. We've done, I think, eight projects together um, over the last couple of years. And uh, we've got one big one that we're looking to get closed out. So anybody wants to buy a $600,000 uh, water side, uh, uh, private uh, gated country club, uh, incredibly beautiful house. Um, we've got just the place for you. Um, it uh, it uh, it's been on market I don't know 90 days and uh, as the as the money investor and having just made an interest payment today on the construction loan I'm kind of nervous. So. So, um, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, I'm going to put this up on YouTube um, under my name Steve Hodgdon. And so I'll put my email address in the um, in the chat for people to uh, pick up. Um, maybe uh, my phone number. 
probably should have put that on one of the slides, don't you think? Uh, but anyway, it's Steve at Modern Asset Management uh, dot com, and uh, and I think that'll do it for this evening. Yeah. Nobody's got any questions. Well, I appreciate you coming in and giving me a listen for a little bit. And uh, let's all uh, let's all go have a nice evening. And oh, Dan said thanks. All right, well, thank you, Dan. All right, all right. You guys all take care, and I'm going to end the meeting now. All right, thank you very much. Bye bye.